Dragon Poems by John Foster, illustrated by Corky Paul, and read to you so you can read along by David Orchard. Happy birthday, dear dragon. There were rumbles of strange jubilation in a dark subterranean lair, for the dragon was having a birthday and his colleagues were gathering there. Hooray! groaned the trolls and the ogres as they pelted each other with stones. Hooray! shrieked a sphinx and a griffin, and the skeletons rattled their bones. Hooray! screamed the queen of the demons. Hooray! boomed a giant. Rejoice! Hooray! piped a tiny hobgoblin in an almost inaudible voice. Hooray! cackled rapturous witches. Hooray! hissed a basilisk too. Then they howled in cacophonous chorus. Happy birthday, dear dragon, to you! And they, they whistled, they squawked, they applauded, as they gleefully brought forth the cake. Oh, thank you, he thundered with pleasure, in a bass that made every ear ache. Then puffing his chest to the fullest, and taking deliberate aim, the dragon huffed once at the candles, and the candles all burst into flame. Portrait of a Dragon If I were an artist, I'd paint the dragon, I'd paint the portrait of a dragon. To do a proper job, I'd borrow colours from the world. For his back I'd need a mountain range, all misty blue. For spikes I'd use dark fir trees pointing to the sky. For overlapping scales I'd squeeze dye from bright anemones. I'd gild his claws like shining swords with starlight. His tail would be a river silver in the sun. For his head, the secret green of forests and deep seas. And his eyes would glow like embers in a tinker's fire. But I'll, I'd keep the best till last. For his hot breath, I'd use all reds and yellows. Crocus, saffron, peony, poppy, geranium, cyclamen, rose and fierce orange flames from a marigold. The Pet My mum gave me some money to buy myself a treat. She said I could buy anything, so long as it wasn't sweets. So off I went to spend it. I wandered round the shops. I couldn't buy, find a thing to buy. Then something made me stop. There in a pet shop window I saw a flash of fire. I saw some scales and burning eyes. And I knew my heart's desire. I gave the man my money. He handed me a lead. Then I walked out of the pet shop with the only pet I need. A pet with wings and gleaming fangs, with skin that's shiny green, with claws and a tail that's longer than any tail you've seen. A pet whose breath is orange flame, whose ears both hiss with steam, who'll fly me to the land of clouds and to the land of dreams. But first, I'd better go home. I hope that it's OK. I hope my mum will like my pet. I wonder what she'll say.
No contest. The little boy was in distress. Dad, he yelled, quick, help. A fiery dragon's just got mum. She's fighting it herself. Don't worry, son, his dad replied, ignoring his son's pleading. The dragon's in with half a chance and carried on his reading. My dragon. I have a purple dragon with a long brass tail that clanks and anyone not nice to me soon feels his fiery fangs. It doesn't clank, does it? It clangs. My dragon. I have a purple dragon with a long brass tail that clangs and anyone not nice to me soon feels his fiery fangs. So if you tell me I'm a dope or call my muscles jelly, you just might dwell a billion years inside his boiling belly. A dragon in the classroom. There's a dragon in the classroom. Its body is a box. Its head, a plastic waste bin. Its eyes are broken clocks. Its legs are cardboard tubes. Its claws are toilet rolls. Its tongue, my dad's old tie. That's why it's full of holes. Oh, what a lovely dragon. Our teacher smiled and said, You are a pretty dragon. She laughed and stroked its head. Oh, no, I'm not, he snorted. Snap, snap, he moved his jaw and chased our screaming teacher along the corridor. Jocelyn, my dragon. My dragon's name is Jocelyn. He's something of a joke, for Jocelyn is very tame. He doesn't like to maul or maim, or breathe a fearsome fiery flame. He's much too smart to smoke. And when I take him to the park, the children form a queue and say, What lovely eyes of red! As one by one they pat his head. And Jocelyn is so well bred, he only eats a few. Dragon Birth In the midnight mists of long ago, on a far off mountainside, there stood. A wild oak wood. In the wild wet wood there grew an oak. Beneath the oak there slept a cave, and in that cave the mosses crept. Beneath the moss there lay a stone, beneath the stone there lay an egg, and in that egg there was a crack. From that crack there breathed a flame, from that flame there burst a fire. And from that fire, dragon came. Dragon's Breath One winter, when the world was still, a dragon came until the cold. He rattled all the icicles and shook his scales of gold. He spread his body on the ground. No, he didn't. He spread his body on the earth to make the flowers grow. He snorted with his fiery breath and melted all the snow. He snorted with his fiery breath to set the river free. He coiled his golden tail around a budding hazel tree. 
He coiled his golden tail until catkins began to shake, then spread his wings and flew to warm another world awake. How dragons hide. Dragon babies are fat and pudgy. They slide down the helter skelter of mother dragon's back. They swing on her tail. They pull faces at themselves in the mirror of her scales. Dragon babies bibble and babble. They blow smoke bubbles. They dribble small flames. They suck sun, hot pebbles. And crunch them in sharp little teeth. Dragon babies play with jingly jewels. They leave them where they fall to become buried treasure. They throw themselves, them, they throw them in the river to see the splashes. Dragon babies clap their small wings, pretending they are old enough to fly. They roll in the river mud to make small clouds of steam. Their mother lies like a low green hill and watches over them. If they hear the sounds of people, they hide in the long green grass. Still as stones they lie, their mother hides her head and becomes a low green hill. They hold their fiery breath and the people pass, seeing only stones in the grass and a low green hill. The School for Young Dragons At the School for Young Dragons, the main lessons are flying and feasting and fighting. In flying, they learn how to take off and land, how to dive and to swoop, how to loop the loop, and how to leave trails of sky writing. In feasting they learn how to behave when invited to dine in an old dragon's cave. They learn that it's rude to gobble your food, that you should not belch fire, that you should must always sit up straight and never ever scorch your plate. In fighting they learn how to scare off their foes with jets of flame that will singe their toes. How to puff a smoke screen so they cannot be seen. How a knight with a lance hasn't much of a chance against dragons who know how a whack of the tail can shatter chain mail. At the school for young dragons, the main lessons are flying and feasting and fighting, which is why you will hear a young dragon say, our lessons are really exciting. It's better than reading and writing. Never trust dragons. I see you've arrived. The dragon said, bright eyes like beacons set in his head. Yes, said the vet, left as soon as I knew. Now tell me the problem, a touch of the flu? My flame has gone out, I can't raise a spark. Not much use when you hunt, when you hunt in the dark. The vet peered down the gigantic throat black as a chimney and reeking of soot. He threw in some petrols, a match to ignite, firelighters, coal, 
and some dynamite. The dragon covered a burp with his paw, a flicker of flame flashed down his jaw. He licked his lips with a golden tongue. Take your fee, vet. You'd better run. I can feel my fires boiling. They are returning. In a couple of minutes, you could be burning. Clutching a diamond the size of a star, the vet scampered away to his car. As he drove off, the dragon's bright fires gushed out of the cave and scorched his tyres. The vet snapped his fingers, laughed at the brute, because he was wearing his flame-proof suit. Lost and Found Lost, a wizard's loving pet, rather longish, somewhat scaly, may be hungry or upset. Please feed daily. P.S. Reward. Found, a dragon breathing fire flails his scaly tail in ire, would eat twenty large meals daily. If we let him, please come and get him. P.S. No reward necessary. Anyone wanting a fiery dragon? With a sulphur smell, the air grew hot as a dragon steamed on the used car lot. Genuine scales, a spiky tail, the notice said, This beast's for sale. Belches flame in a crimson sheet and guarantees a steady heat. Huge and fearless, brave and bold, and thermostatically controlled. It's careful not to sear or scorch, use as a heater or a torch, warmer than a blacksmith's forge and recommended by St George. I bought the beast, what else could I do? Now you should see my barbecue. The Toaster A silver-scaled dragon with jaws flaming red sits at my elbow and toasts my bread. I hand him fat slices and then, one by one, he hands them back when he sees they are done. Drawback The dragon raged with flame and fire. He blew it down his nose. But the poor old soul was quite cross-eyed and burnt off all his toes. Dragon Band It's the best in the land, the Dragon Band. There's Norda on recorder, Gonda on guitar. Dronga on the bonga and the big umfa. Dorgan plays the organ and Ardong sings a song. It does drag on a bit. It's much too long. Cidarno plays piano, giving it a bash. And Rango twangs a banjo with great panache. When they get it all together, it's grand. Oh, grand. It's the latest. It's the greatest. It's the Dragon Band.
Is there a dragon in the house? I visited a castle one summer afternoon. I didn't want to join the crowd, so I wandered off alone. Over the creaking drawbridge, past the tower keep, and in a courtyard on the cobbles, I came upon a dragon. Yes, a dragon, fast asleep. I could see that it was sleeping and not a ghost or dead, for I saw it gently breathing and it flicked its heavy ears against the flies that, flies that buzzed its head. I tiptoed up to touch it for curiosity and proof, and its scales were rough as the bark of a tree and thick as tiles on a roof. Then the crowd came round the corner, and the gu crowd's guide said, and, in, and, in, and it's here in this very courtyard that a knight fought a terrible dragon, and the dragon dropped down dead. The dragon opened yellow eyes, it yawned, and stretched, and blinked. And over the heads of the guide and crowd, it looked at me and winked. Oh, no, not dead, the dragon said. That isn't dragon law. But no one else there heard it speak. No one else there saw. As sure as grass is green, the dragon said. As sure as daisies grow. Dragons do not die. They simply come and go. They come and go as surely as heroes in tin will dent. Then it grinned and waved its tail, and then the dragon went. The crowd moved on behind the guide through a narrow castle door. They clattered, scuffed and tripped. The cobbled courtyard floor but none of those feet rubbed out the prince, the prince of the dragon's paw. The prince of its paw on the cobbles left behind to show that dragons do not die, they simply come and go. This story is for dragons, for I've never thought it right that dragons should be invented to make a hero of a knight. The Grateful Dragon A dragon crawled to the castle door, and everyone inside looked down on it from the castle walls, curious but terrified. It was half the size of a football pitch, bright green with spots of red, but it hadn't the strength to lash its tail and lay there as if dead. The winter had turned the woods to iron, the snow was deep as a house, there wasn't a blade of grass to be seen, nor a skinny harvest mouse. It's starving! the king cried. Now's our chance! Looking down from the castle walls, wall, bring lances and crossbows and arrows, and let's kill it! Once for all, and for all. The dragon was too weak to move, more than an eyelid, and yet the princess saw a tear form there, and it moved her heart with regret. Please spare the dragon, the princess begged. Put out some bundles of hay. Once it's grown strong from eating, it will harmlessly go away. The king looked hard in his daughter's face and saw how much she cared, then nodded that they should do as she asked, and so the dragon was spared. Next autumn brought enemy soldiers. The king and his subjects shut themselves in the castle, and there they starved 
while the harvest stayed uncut. The dragon, oh, it's not the dragon, the princess wept on the castle wall when suddenly there came a whirlwind of thunder and fury, the dragon spouting flame. The enemy soldiers, the enemy soldiers rang off ran off in fright and never again were seen. And the people came out of the castle and gathered the harvest in. The Lonely Dragon The Lonely Dragon He lives in the mouth of a mountain behind the teeth of a mist of mist. He sighs at the thought of the knights he's not fought and the maidens he's never kissed. He sprawls in a nest of treasure, plays five stones with rubies and pearls. On the back of his paw he wipes his nose and idly on his rattling toes the crown of a king he twirls. Hmm. The Lonely Dragon The Lonely Dragon, he lives in the mouth of a mountain, behind the teeth of mist. He sighs at the thought of the, dra of the knights he's not fought, and the maidens he, has, he's never, he never has kissed. He spawns in a nest of treasure, plays five stones with rubies and pearls. On the back of his paw he wipes his nose, and idly on his rattling toes, the crown of a king he twirls. He belches and scrapes, scratches his belly, he is bored with before and behind him. He spits sparks to the dark and sings rude songs. His roar shakes the mountain tops like blamange, but only the spiders mind him. Rusty and forgotten lies his tin opener for knights, with broken swords, torn castle flags, and bits and bobs in bags and bags, and he longs for electric lights. He dreams of music and fairgrounds, fizzy lemonade and chips, of supermarkets, cars and roads, of Wellington boots and designer clothes, and sherbet, dabs and dips. He thinks of a small town house with a telephone in the hall. He'd like to rub noses and talk about roses with neighbours over the wall. He will not come down from the mountain, for dragons are none or few. He won't leave his lair. He just doesn't dare, for fear he will end in a zoo. The Dragon I saw a cloud like a dragon lying in wait in the sky with a purple head and a purple tail and a little blue patch for an eye. From his snout came flames of fire and he began to run, chasing the daylight away to the west and fighting the setting sun. The Ice Dragons They tell of polar dragons who breathe frost instead of fire, with icicles nine along their backs, each one a glassy spire. In the eerie light of that endless white, where bleak winds always blow, they make their homes near icy, neath, neath icy domes in everlasting snow. And when these dragons gather, this is the story that's told, they stand in an arctic circle, they breathe, and the world grows cold.
the last dragon, which means this is the last of the dragon poems because I've already done the dinosaur poems on a different occasion with a different video. The last dragon. Beneath a high mountain, inside a dark cave, a crusty old dragon as cold as the grave. As cold as the high vaulted stone overhead, as cold as the gold that is spilled as his bed. The last of the dragons there will be no more, the slow and slow beats his heart on his glittering store. The beating gets slower as life drifts away, a hundred more lifetimes just passed as a day. At last a low moan, when there was once a roar, the last of the dragons is breathing no more.